What is your Tinder horror story? Well, I've only gone on one Tinder date. We talked for a bit and I agreed to pick her up at Starbucks. She looked nothing like her pictures, but I thought I should be nice and at least hang out with her for a bit. We went to her place and the entire house reeked like cat pee, like saturated. Then she proceeded to show me her massive collection of animal tail butt plugs. She screamed at her chihuahua and smacked it right on the nose and without missing a beat just asks if I want to make out on the couch. I awkwardly sat down and pretended to look at my phone and made up that my grandma was dying so I could get the frick out. You would think someone with animal butt plugs would treat their pets better. Or I guess not? I don't know. It's just weird, man. It's just weird. We now have a Discord. Check out the server in the link in the description. Story 2. Talked to him for two weeks before we went out and no red flags. So we ended up going out for dinner. I said I hadn't been out in a while because I was trying to save money for a washer and dryer. He told me instead of saving for that, I should save for a boob job. I didn't even know how to reply. So he followed it up with, No, it's not a bad thing. My sister and mom both had it done and they look amazing. This is all before the waitress even brought our drinks. I just got up and left. Story 3. We were supposed to meet at 9pm. He fell asleep and called me at 9.30 when I was already at the carnival. I told him not to bother coming as I didn't want to see him. He asked for another chance and I agreed. Unfortunately, my dad got really ill and had to spend the next six weeks in the hospital with me visiting him daily. I had no time for dates and he got extremely mad. He made a fake Instagram account which he used to follow me and everybody that I followed. He then saw me in a friend's Instagram story and showed up to the restaurant we were at. He called me a liar and we had to threaten to call the police because he would not leave. With the way that one ended, I feel bad for thinking in the first part it's like, oh yeah, this could have been my friend. And then nope, dude got real bad real fast. Story 4. Fresh off a breakup on campus. Match with this really good looking girl who is talking pure filth. Obviously, I'm just an idiot with a hurt heart, so I don't question much. Head over to her place a few days later. She insisted I come over on a certain day at xxx o'clock. Usually, I would have been sketched out, but it was in the middle of the day on a big campus. What exactly could go that south? Half hour in, her husband comes home. I was being used in the revenge plot. No more Tinder. Story 5. My worst Tinder experience was pretty traumatizing for me at the time. I was a sophomore in college and she was a junior or senior at the same school. The first time we ever hung out, I went over to her apartment and we just watched some Netflix and hung out. Nothing crazy. I was thinking that this chick is super cool. We may have something here. So I leave telling her I'd like to see her again if she's down. She told me that she would love to and just hit her up whenever and we'll make some plans. We start texting slash snapchatting throughout the week and organize some plans for the following weekend. Out of no where she starts sending me unsolicited nudes. Never once asked for them. And when we were hanging out the weekend prior, there was no intimate activity at any level. We quite literally Netflixed and chilled. It caught me off guard, but I was more than cool with it. I'm a young college guy and this hot older chick wants to send me nudes after hanging out only one time. Yes, please. Fast forward to the weekend. She comes to my apartment and we're hanging out with my roommates watching something on TV. She asks me if she can stay the night. And after sending nudes to me all week, I kind of figured what was up. So in my head, I'm like, uh, hell yes. But I tell her, of course, and to be polite, I offer to sleep on the couch because we've only known each other for all of about two weeks and have only seen each other in person one time prior. She tells me she'd rather me sleep in my bed with her, so I know it's on. We got to Netflix and chilling in my room and I make a move. We start to hook up and eventually wind up banging. I wore a rubber and finished inside of it and tossed it off to the side of my bed. As we're laying there after a few minutes, she gets up abruptly, comes around to my side of the bed and grabs the rubber off the floor and runs into the bathroom. I'm a little confused, maybe a little concerned, but kind of brush it off. As I'm laying there in my bed, I hear a loud crash in my bathroom and she yells, Frick! I ask if she's okay and get no response. I'm a little concerned thinking this girl just fell in my bathroom and cracked her head open or something. I go to open the door and she is standing in my shower with one leg propped up, trying to shove the rubber into herself. After she had flipped it, inside out. I freak out, no clue what to do. She's clearly freaked out as well and probably embarrassed. I have no clue. I shut the door and she immediately comes back out, says she's gonna leave and I say, sounds good. I never hear from her again. That is a weirdly calm way to react when she is doing what, uh, what she was doing. That is cause for concern, my dude. You do not want to have to deal with the aftermath of that. Story 6. 
We lived about 25 minutes from each other, so agreed to meet at the beach pier about halfway between. Before meeting, we had been texting and he seemed totally normal. I was already at the pier when he texted me saying he can't meet me there because his license is revoked and it's too far for him to walk. I should have just left then, but I agreed to meet him at a pizza place closer to him. I get there and I'm standing outside when I see him, and quickly realize the pics from his profile were at least three to five years old. Homeboy looks like the dollar store version of himself. Greasy, looks like he hasn't showered in days, hair undone, holes in his shirt. I awkwardly give him a side hug and suggest we get a seat. And he says, Oh no, we're not getting pizza, let's go to the park. I awkwardly say, okay. And as he talks, I realize his gums and tongue ring are stained black from smoking. By this point, I am completely turned off, and I'm just keeping up with formalities. So we get to the park and find a bench to talk, and before I can sit down, homie pulls me onto his lap, squeezing me and saying, God, baby girl, you are so freaking cute. I awkwardly scooch away and try to get a conversation going. He pulls out his phone and starts texting for a minute, not really listening to me before interrupting with, Have you smoked? My friend is a plug. We could go back to my place for a bowl. I decline. Aw, come on, baby girl. My place is just right there. We could have some fun, too. I decline again. Next thing you know, he pulls me closer by the face and whispers, You're so innocent before broad-tongued licking my face from chin to ear. Shell-shocked, I just sit there for a moment, processing what the frick just happened, as he keeps talking about weed before I decide to fake an urgent phone call and leave. There are so few people who actually get dates from Tinder. And this guy, this guy was one of them, huh? Story 7. First date, we went to see a movie. She brought her sister along without consulting me first, and I somehow ended up paying for both of their tickets. Bit of a doormat, old me. We went to see Star Wars The Force Awakens. Turns out, neither of them had seen a Star Wars film before, nor had any idea what was going on. Awesome. Date ended at McDonald's after the movie with one hour plus of her eating fries, one at a time, and her sister talking crap about basically everyone at her work. To this day, I'm not sure what that date was even about. There was no second date. Story 8. Chatted with this girl for about two weeks. Every conversation went well, and eventually I got her number, and she started sharing nudes and speaking dirty. Late one evening after a stressful workday, she talks me into driving an hour to come get coffee with her. She spends the next hour and a half non-stop talking about her ex and how she has to see him at the bank, and all this personal upset ex-girlfriend stuff. She cuts me off any time I try to speak, and would change the subject right back to him. A day later, I get a text about how I didn't do any talking and I was too boring to be anything more than just friends with. She got irate when I pointed out she would not allow me to speak, and only wanted to talk about her ex-boyfriend when we have never once had a slow or boring conversation before meeting up. Story 9. This girl I matched with just messaged to troll me. I was like, hey, what's up? And she was like, don't talk to me unless you plan on banging me with your 9-inch dong. I forgot what my reply was, but she obviously never messaged back. Then a week later, I'm getting McDonald's, and this girl was the one who handed me my food. She recognizes me instantly and just had this total look of fear in her eyes. I walked out of there so quick. That poor girl thought I purposely sought her out to confront her or something. Story 10. Met a guy, decent conversation. Smart, funny, mutual nerdy hobbies. We decide to meet up at the local gamer bar and play some games while having our first date. Get in, sit down, dude has no teeth. Says a hack dentist told him they had to all get removed. Couldn't get dentures due to budget. Needed to wait for bone shards to fall out of his gums, etc. Proceeded to spit all over our food while talking, which granted I knew he couldn't help, but if he can hide something this big from someone, what else could he be hiding? Plus, I couldn't stomach the thought of making out with someone with no teeth. Story 11. A chick said she was having a work party at her house and I should come over. It's BYOB, so I brought a six-pack for myself. Went to her place and noticed more than half of the people were younger, 17 to 18, while I was 21 and the girl was also 21. Then they gathered everyone in the living room and proceeded to talk about the job. Turns out it was one of those pyramid scheme recruiting gatherings. I just sat there drinking my beer, only one drinking, for two hours because I thought it was rude to leave because they were telling sob stories and saying how much this job had helped them. Sat there listening to some head of the group guy saying how we can make millions in a short amount of time. Saying BS like, you see my BMW 3 Series out front? That's a company car that you can drive around in if you do what we do. It was sad because they were trapping low-income teens that are deciding not to go to college and join them. After the pitch, I pretty much had enough and was preparing to leave. Then the girl came up to me and asked what I thought, and I just said it's not for me and I'm leaving. 
She asked if I wanted to take my beer, and I said they needed it more than I did. Two or three weeks later, she sent me a text. Unfortunately, we exchanged numbers, asking if the head of the group guy can call me, and ask me questions on why I'm not signing up, and how I thought the group session went. I did not reply, but sure enough, the dude called me, and I politely said it's not for me, but he kept pushing. Finally, I had to tell him to frick off. And that was the end of that. Never went to work parties for a Tinder date again. It was a complete crap show, and if it wasn't for the beer I brought or the Tinder date's dog, I would have just left. Looking back on it during the pitch, the head of the group guy said at one point, If you're not interested in making a million dollars, you can just leave. No one's stopping you. I really wish I stood up, chugged my beer, and said, Screw this crap. You guys are all stupid and no one should be joining. You will ruin your lives. And walked out. But that's just a daydream I have in the shower. Story 12. Not Tinder, but Match.com, and right in its infancy too. Long time ago when it was just weirdos doing online dating. I matched and met up with a girl. She was way hotter than me, like crazy hot, way out of my league. The date was going super well and we'd even made out a bit. Couldn't believe my luck. We decided that as it was going so well, we'd keep it going and headed to a bar. We were getting cozy in a corner when a group of African lads came into the bar. I live in a very homogenous white country, to the point that that would be noteworthy especially at that time. She got up off of where we were sitting and began shouting abuse at the lads who came in saying they didn't belong here and dropping the n-word several times. I felt like that moment in a horror movie where the camera zooms in on your face and the background zooms out. I just got up and walked out. She tried to call me the next day to set up another date. I just ignored her. Clearly frickin' nuts. Too good to be true in the truest sense. Story 13. Not my story, but I knew a guy who had a Freudian slip, more dark side Kermit, bad enough that it ruined everything. I was told this by him after he got home, and suffice to say, he was like, Why the frick did I say that? Date had been going well, and they were walking back to a bus station. They passed a creepy alley, and she said something to the effect of, Wow, I would not like to go down that alley. To which he responded, I imagine you are very assaultable. Suffice to say, she ran for the hills and he was mortified. He very much so was not a creepy person and had no clue why the hell he said that. Nor has he, to the extent of my knowledge, ever assaulted anyone. But Christ almighty, do I agree with the girl's decision to run. My man, this isn't even a fumble. You brought a knife onto the field and you just stabbed the ball. What a terrible, terrible play. Story 14. I went on a Tinder date several months ago around October and it went really well. Girl had a job, wasn't crazy, and was cute, so we decided to have a second date. The only thing was that the second date was at her Thanksgiving party so she could introduce me to her friends and family, which I thought was a bit too early for. Anyway, I didn't have anything planned that day so I decided to go. My job was to make the jungle juice for the party, and it consisted of the usual Everclear, Hawaiian Punch, Lemonade Powder, and Ice combo I've used throughout college. It worked wonders, and everyone got really drunk. Near the end of the party, my date and her friends told me I did an amazing job on the drink. My date also mentioned that she really liked the fruit I added into there, and that everyone at the party was trying to get some. For some reason, that did not sit well with drunk me, so I headed over to the alcohol canister to investigate. I grabbed my trusty ladle and started scraping the bottom of the canisters, and on one of the ladles, I found some chunks of meat and pieces of ramen. That's when I realized that someone had puked in the jungle juice. Story 15. This isn't actually my story, it's my mom's. After getting out of an incredibly long and unpleasant marriage, my mom joined Tinder. Stella wanted to get her groove back, and I was 100% on her team. I'm an adult. I can't emphasize enough, she was not looking for a long-term connection. Her work sent her out of state for a while and everything seemed perfect. She's going to get her rando D and there's no chance of it getting serious. She's sending me screenshots on the guy she's considering. I'm giving her tips on safety and then she picks a guy. I immediately tell her that that is not a wise choice. This guy's profile is 98% red flags by volume. Whatever, she's an adult, I literally cannot stop her. Somehow, in the four hours they are physically together, he figures out which flight she's taking the next day. He used that to find her final destination and somehow even finds her home address. He uses the public tax information to find her full name and from there, hunts her down on Facebook. And finds my dad, calls him on the phone and dishes everything. Sends him pictures and screenshots of convos. Then he starts sending my mom harassing messages that he loves her, but that he can't trust her. Ultimately, my mom had to call the police. Ah yes, because you have shown yourself to be a trustworthy and good person, right? 
Just absolutely incredible showing by stalking your Tinder date. Story 16. I matched with a girl and sent a lot of messages. Later that night we talked on the phone and the conversation was going really well. So I asked to go out the next night. She agreed and then five minutes later she tells me that she needs to tell me something. She tells me that she's permanently in a wheelchair. So I'm either an a-hole if I back out now or an a-hole if I lead her on. I figure why not, it's just a date and it could be a fun time. We talk more that night and go to bed. The next morning, she calls me early and tells me she's doing something crazy. She won't tell me what, but she said that she'll show me later. A few hours goes by and she calls me back, and tells me that she's going to send me a pic of what she did. I check my messages and I see a picture of her wrist with my name now tattooed onto it. We end the call and I immediately tell my friends about this crazy girl. Later that night, I'm driving to her place because I figure she can be committed enough to tattoo my name on her. I should be committed enough to go on this date. Plus, I have to know it's real. I'm almost at her place and I realize that my car may not accommodate her wheelchair, and I know she drives, so I ask if she can drive us. I'm walking in the parking lot and she drives up and I get in the car. Now, I had figured she had a handicapped enabled car. Nope. Turns out she just uses two crutches to drive, one on the gas and one on the brake. I don't like this, as we're driving on the Southern California freeways in traffic. We go to eat and she gets a phone call from her daughter. Turns out, she left her 10-year-old daughter home alone and scared. I'm like, hey, we can go. But she's like, no, it's okay, I gave her something to make her sleep, she'll be asleep soon. So we finish up and I was going to take her to see a movie. But the kid thing was way too much, so we head home and my fingers are already crossed that we make it. When she turns to me while driving and says, wow, I'm kind of drunk. In my head, I'm like, you only had one drink. But I ask if I can drive and she says, no. She's going to get in the fast lane and uses her crutch to hit the gas. I say my last prayers, but we made it back to her place. So I wheeled her back to her door and said goodbye and lived. Tattoo was real though. This is a lot of bad decisions very quickly, wow. It's kind of impressive that the woman did not realize that any of what she was doing was bad. I have a feeling that poor 10 year old is, uh, is gonna have some issues growing up. Best of luck, child. Best of luck.